two big names in the sport who have had such an impact on kids and youth baseball during their playing days and since retiring have gotten together for a great project. Uh, Derek Jeter's Turn 2 Foundation, Cal Ripken, Sen Cal Ripken Jr.'s Cal Ripken Sr. Foundation, and we are joined by both Cal and Derek on Hot Stove this morning to talk about this project. Guys, thanks for taking a little bit of time prior to the ribbon cutting ceremony. Welcome to the show. Cal, tell us about this project that you and Derek have gotten together on. Well, I mean, if you think about it, our foundations uh, are very similar in its, in its mission. We both uh, want to help kids, uh, young people, and uh, we built, uh, we've had the experience of building, I think 115 or 116 fields right now. And Derek had a project up here that uh, we thought we could be helpful with. And so we got together. And uh, I guess today is to, is to celebrate it and uh, get a little attention for the great work that's, uh, that was done here. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful field. Hey, Derek, um, you're back home in Kalamazoo and, and getting a chance to do this. How important was it to do it there in Kalamazoo? Ways you've been here to Kalamazoo before, and and uh, I got to mention also for Harold, we redid the softball fields too, mm -hmm. because you know Harold grew up playing softball, but I know his his, his daughter plays softball as well, <laughs> as well. But no, it's important, it's man. Funny, this huh? is this is where I grew up, obviously where I grew up. It means the world to me here, and uh, you know they named the field after me a few years back, and I remember coming with my family for we had a foundation event and I was looking at the field saying man we got to redo these fields and and we were hoping to do it a few years ago but COVID obviously stalled our plans a little bit and and we got the support from Cal and Cal Ripken Senior Foundation uh, we partnered with us to redo these fields and it looks absolutely amazing they didn't show me any pictures of it being finished so this is the first time I'm seeing it live it was probably tough for you two to fundraise together I don't know how many people want to join you two uh, Cal, I'll throw that at you, man. <laughs> see, see what you started? You get on Harold. Now I know, I know, us. I know. We got mics too, though, Harold. <laughs> hey, tell us a little bit about the facility itself. What, I mean, what were the changes that you guys did to get this thing looking as great as it does, obviously, today? Yeah, well, we went to an artificial surface. I mean, for those of you that have played baseball up north in the cold weather, it's kind of hard to maintain the, the conditions of the fields. And so we went to an artificial surface. We sort of rejiggered where the fields are. This We're standing in the baseball field now. This used to be the softball field, and the softball field's on the other side. So they rejiggered the configuration. Um, you know, it was a lot more difficult to play baseball when I was coming up, growing up. You know, we're... <laughs> those guys now when I was For growing sure. up but when I was growing up it was much more harder to play baseball here in Kalamazoo so we're trying to make it easier for the student athletes here oh uh, man you're out there playing in the dirt rocks right trying to figure out how to get it done <laughs> walking to school up 10 miles uphill both ways yeah, yeah. we're those guys now it's rough it's rough it's rough hey, exactly. I do I do want to ask you Cal um when you saw young Derek Jeter coming to the big leagues what did you what did you see what were some of your first impressions um, someone that uh, was extremely gifted, that uh, made the game look pretty easy. Um, and uh, um, I guess learning over the years, too, is his mental strength. You know, he didn't seem to get too high when he was doing well. It didn't seem to get too low. Uh, came to the ballpark every day with that even, even approach and very consistent. Uh, so watching him, I got a chance to play against him for about five years. Um, competed against him, uh, you know, in the playoffs uh, a couple of those years. Um, he introduced me to Jeffrey Mayer, by the way. Uh, turned his uh, fly, fly ball to right into a home run, and we ended up losing that series. Cal, did you know immediately <laughs> but, uh, that it was, was a, not it was a, a home joy. run? Cal, did you know that wasn't a home run? <laughs> yeah, e even from my angle, from uh, from where I was, uh, you could tell it wasn't going to go out the ballpark. This is a therapy session right now, so we're going to get it all out. So I leave it to us to stay real contemporary with you guys, too, and go back to Jeffrey Mayer. <laughs> Uh, hey, let me ask you guys this about, because you guys were both Rookies of the Year to start out your career. We just got through with the Rookie of the Year presentations, which you were part of last night. Uh, Gunnar Henderson, Corbin Carroll, two stars. Do you think that expectations on rookie players are different, perhaps more now than they were when you guys won the awards when you began your careers, Derek? Uh, you know, I, I think when I came up, um, I don't want to speak for Cal, but you know, the expectation level wasn't as high, I think, for rookies because, you know, I came up to a team that had just 
gone to the postseason in, in 1995. I was up for a couple of weeks. But they just wanted me to go out there and try to be consistent. You know, I, I don't think anyone pointed the finger and said, you need to win Rookie of the Year. We were trying to get to the postseason and trying to win a championship. So I think nowadays, with all the attention that players are getting at a young age, even coming up through the minor leagues, I think the expectation level is a little bit higher. And Cal, you went to a World uh, Series your rookie year. Uh, second year, um, 82, we went to the last day of the season and Milwaukee uh, went on to the playoffs. We lost game number 162, which kicked us out. Um, but I was going to piggyback on what uh, Derek had said. In Baltimore, there seemed to be a lot higher expectations for the young guys. Adley Rushman, uh, you know, he was going to be the savior coming up, and he has proved to be, to be that. Gunner, there was high hopes for him. Uh, number one prospect, all kinds of athleticism, uh, big shortstop, good power. And uh, so, to me, it seems like the expectations were, were a lot greater for the and, – and it seems like they're better suited now. They're playing in more baseball. They seem to be in uh, situations where the big leagues don't, doesn't intimidate them. There used to be sort of a transition that was expected when you come up from the minor leagues that you need to get your feet on the ground first. Gunner, Gunner struggled a bit early, which reminded me of, of my first year uh, struggling and then uh, having the club have confidence in you and keep putting you out there. Um, you started to get it, and then it, then it became normal. So uh, Gunner had a fantastic uh, you know, end of the year. I mean, fantastic year all the way around. But that first part of the year, there was uh, some some feelings that, uh, you know, maybe he'd have to go back down. And I'm glad he fought through it, and I'm glad he didn't have to do that. Hey, we won't keep you guys much longer. I know it's cold. But I, I, I do want to ask you a, a baseball question, Cal. And I'll start with you because – this is a Herald folklore. Uh, I'd heard that when you first came up, <laughs> that Earl Weaver just basically, when he moved you to short, said, hey, don't, don't make two errors and throw it away. Uh, I want to talk <laughs> defensively, just not making a bunch of errors. And Derek's been there making errors, and he was able to cut it down, win gold gloves. Uh, w what's your advice to a lot of young kids that are trying to figure out how not to build up on errors and how to get better? I'll start with you, Cal, and then, Derek, you can piggyback <laughs> off it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure I have the secret to that. But we're, Derek and I were uh, comparing notes last, uh, and I made 32 errors in my first 64 games in Bluefield uh, rookie league, and you made. I made 56 in my first full season. So he made a, 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 a bigger change than I did. But uh, <laughs> so the I game was the fast. Right I played more games though. I played, I, I, I played more games though. I played more games. The, yeah, the, the game. <laughs> the game was fast for me when I first came out of high school. You, and you need to figure out how the game is played. You slow it down a little bit. Um, and catch the ball and throw the ball to first base. What you were alluding to is Earl Weaver. He didn't tell me I was going to go to shortstop. I, my name was in the lineup that day, and he came to me and had a meeting, and uh, this was his pep talk. He goes, when the ground ball comes to you, I want you to catch it. <laughs> and then I want you to get a good grip on it, take your time, throw it to first base. Um, if, you, uh, if he's safe, he's safe. He's only on first. <laughs> so and I go, well, that's, pretty, that's pretty elementary. Um, but I, I guess the common sense is catch, catch it, make a good throw to first base. Um, don't compound the issue by, uh, by trying to do too much. I think that was his message. I'm going to give you a break because uh, I, I remember the ballpark in Bluefield, and it looked like uh, you know, multiple grenades had hit the ground right before game time every day at that little place. It, it, it if, sounds like pre-Kalamazoo, the way we'll, Derek we'll, was describing his high school field. No. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that uh, narrative. I like, the, I like that thought. The Are field you, was so bad, that's why I made some so, errors. So what you got to say, Derek, what you got to say, Mr. 56? No, I think, yeah, man. I mean, look, it, we, like Cal said, we were having a conversation last night talking about slowing the game down. I think a lot of times when you're a young player and you're promoted to different levels, the game tends to speed up. So I think it, it's a lot more than just physical. I think when you're making a lot of mistakes, you're making a lot of errors, people think you're, they're all physical mistakes. But mentally, you have to be able to slow the game down. And that's a challenge. It's a challenge for a lot of people because it can snowball when you're when you're failing and uh, you know we were talking about it on the car right over here um, you know you tell a lot about a player and how they respond to failure so um, it's it's a chat that, that that's I never heard that story but you know that's the easy way catch it <laughs> and then get a grip and then throw it simple there yeah. you go there's your, there's your advice Harold yeah, there you go. go wrong there you go I know you guys have a ribbon cutting ceremony <laughs> is there a speech that you'll have to make I mean uh, I could I could suggest the judge Schmale's speech before christening the flying wasp in Caddyshack it's easy to grin when your ship has come in and you've got the stock market beat, blah, blah, blah. Do you have a speech to make before you cut the ribbon? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm gonna write that down and I'm okay. gonna use it. I'm gonna try to fit that one into the speech. I'll have I'll have Harold text it's, it's you. Derek, it's Derek's home turf. <laughs> hey it's guys, read the lawn care. Hit the lawn care question for Cal real quick. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know that I have that one queued up. I got a lot of Harold nonsense on this uh, soundboard here, but I, yeah. you know what? It's it's all out of order. I guess. Oh. How one. far is your home from uh, Minnesota? Here we go. What is your advice for lawn care for somebody who has that great lawn at their yard? Well, we would have asked you that if it wasn't turf. <laughs> But uh, you've already clarified that, too. Hey, guys, right, guys. We appreciate you being with us. Uh, good luck uh, with what's happening today. Congratulations on what you've accomplished together. Thanks for your time this morning, guys. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.